welcome you all to the next session of parallel programming where we'll be starting with the CUDA memory management of unit 4. We'll see the various types of memories which will help us in parallel processing. When you just see this uh, CUDA memory management here, as you all can see, uh, we have a communication between you have a separate memory in the GPU and you have a separate memory in your CPU. So CPU has a CPU RAM and the GPU has a GPU RAM. And as we were been seeing in all these units, you have a PCI bus where PCIe stands for express and it is a link between your CPU and your GPU. So the data from your CPU will be transferred using your PCI bus to your GPU RAM and it reaches the various levels of your cache memory until the data is being dumped into your registers or your shared memory which are used for performing the operations by the cores on your streaming multiprocess. So this just gives you a pathway how the data is being transferred from the CPU to your GPU. Now, before uh, moving on in detail about your various types of CUDA memories, now we'll see about NVIDIA Visual Profi Profiler, or we can even call it as NVIDIA Visual Profiler. As the name implies, Visual Profiler, it is nothing but a graphical tool. This graphical tool will help the user or it helps the developer. This graphical tool will help the developer to analyze what are the potential bottlenecks or what are the difficulties when you are executing the program on a GPU? And once you are able to identify the bottlenecks or the performance limits, you go for using some optimization methods. And these optimization methods will be applied on your CUDA program so that the performance levels of the program will be improved. So, this visual profiler will help us to perform these particular tasks. So ultimately, I want my performance of the system to be improved. So when you see this visual profiler, it gives you information about your timeline. It gives a summary of overall summary of what all uh, programs are being executed analysis results. Now we'll see each one in detail. Coming to your timeline, as you could see, this is CUDA mem copy. This is some particular uh, GPU operation. It is telling you how much amount of time this GPU activity is taking. And when you see this, these are your different vector operations that are being done. So each vector operation uh, that is being given to a core, it is helping you to know the amount of time that has been taken by the GPU in order to perform these operations. So these are your all operations that are being executed. And this is a timeline. Now, if you want to analyze uh, deeper into the performance of your uh, GPU, you can go for an analyzing this in two ways. One, we call it as guided analysis. The other, we call it as unguided analysis. So when you see this guided analysis here, uh, if you could see this uh, left side panel, you have all these applications and it, it is guiding you. So when I click on a particular tab here, it gives me the overview of it. So what is a performance critical kernels? What is a perform, uh, compute analysis? What is your latency analysis? So against each application, uh, it, will, it is just giving you the guidance on how to know the performance. And you need to just click on each of the tab to know the internal details. Whereas when I see this right side pan of the pane here, this we call it as unguided. So in unguided, it just gives you the overall picture of the performance of an application. So in analysis part, you can either go through step by step procedure in guided or you can just have an overview of your total application. So this is related to analysis part in your NVIDIA visual profiler. Now, having seen, I mean, that is uh, all about your NVIDIA visual profiler, which will just help you to understand the performance of a given application, which is being executed on a GPU. Now, we'll see uh, the different memories that are available on it. So you have, you can even call it as GPU memories or CUDA memories. Now, this is a communication between your CPU and this is your GPU. And when you see your GPU, these are different memories. You have your shared memory, registers, you have your local memory, global memory, constant memory, and your texture memory. Now, we'll see each of these memories. 
coming to the first type of memory we call it as a global memory or the other term given to this global memory is your device memory so when you see this global memory global memory will act as a uh, communication channel between your gpu and your cpu so uh, all your input data your intermediate operations or uh, the result output values are to be dumped onto your global memory so the data can be used both by the cpu as well as your gpu both of them can use the memory and uh, you can store a large set of data in this global memory so huge amount of data can be stored in this global memory pertaining to the global memory when you want to actually see the execution normally you assign a thread to a you assign a block to a streaming multiprocessor and this will be executed right so when i say a block it is collection of threads so when you see this thread block logically we visualize that it is a group of all these are nothing but your threads but internally when you are assigning it to a multiprocessor or when you are giving it to your streaming multiprocessor for execution the threads are being grouped into a collection of 32 and each thread id will be ranging from 0 to 31 and this 32 threads whatever number of threads you are giving there will be to, in logical view if for example if i have some 214 threads which will be basically divided into divided by 32 and each of this collection of 32 threads will be calling it as a wap wap so wap is the basic execution unit which is nothing but collection of 32 threads and that 32 threads will be executed on your streaming multiprocess and for this uh, you require the data to be taken from your global memory and when you deal with your global memory here we have to be very much uh, uh, precise about your collapsed access and uncollapsed access so when you see your collapsed access if i'm taking a wap here wap is nothing but 32 threads so if all of the threads are accessing the data sequentially one after the other so thread idx as we all know it gives the id of a thread right so if you are able to access the data sequentially one after the other this we call it as collapsed so collapsed access is also known as sequential access so in global memory you can have sequential access or you can even go for random access so random access is nothing but your uncollapsed access so when you see your uncollapsed access each thread can take its own data it can take the data from any of the memory locations that is the reason we are using a random function here so sequential and random are the two axes that are being related with your global memory the next type of memory what we have here is shared memory so when you go for your shared memory where you have a thread block right where you have a collection of all the threads and all the threads uh, have to use some memory which is to be shared so this we call is a shared memory so shared memory is the memory which is shared by all the threads so all the threads for the communication will be using this shared memory and this shared memory will be present per block so what is a block it is a collection of threads right the total block can use a can, will have a block will have a memory and that memory is nothing but a shared memory and why am i calling it as shared because threads in uh, block internally has threads and all the threads are using the same part of the memory we call it as shared memory so when you have a shared memory you can even go for concurrent access so two or three threads can access the data present in that particular shared memory so that it helps you in communication between the threads now when you go for the shared memory basically when you see the memory as a block it is divided into partitions so when you see your shared memory it is divided into partitions and each partition we normally call it as a bank this we call it as a bank so bank is ranging from 0 to uh, 15 when you take this case so when you are dividing your shared memory it should be either divided into 2 power uh, 4 i mean 16 or 2 power 5 32 or 2 power 6 64 your total available memory should be divided in the multiples of this 16 32 64 so here i'm taking a bank example banks example where the shared memory is divided into 16 banks now uh, the problem here is when two or three threads uh, try to 
use the same uh, bank at the same time you get a conflict right so when you see this example here they are accessing sequentially thread 0 bank 0 thread 7 bank 7 so they are accessing them in a sequential order so you will not have any bank conflict now when you go for this random access thread 0 is accessing bank 1 thread 3 is accessing blank 0 so even though they are not accessing simultaneously uh, each thread is accessing only a single block at a time so you call there also you don't have any bank conflicts but in shared memory you have to be very much clear when two or three threads now for example if i go for thread one here so thread one and thread 10 for example are accessing your bank two so two or more threads are trying to access the same bank at the same time you get a problem of bank conflict why because one thread may be using the bank for writing the data the other thread may be thread one is used is using it for writing thread two can use it for reading the data so here when one is writing another at the same time the other is performing a read operation you get the conflict so in shared memory we have to take care of this bank conflicts the next type of memory we have is registers as we all know when you you have a gpu and this GPU has a set of registers. So the number of registers present in the GPU are more when compared to your CPU registers. So the number of registers are more and you can store your input data in the registers, right? And the advantage of storing your data in registers is fast access. And uh, the main problem with the registers is though you have the advantage, they are obviously they will be in limited values. So if you are not able to dump the total data uh, into the registers available now for example in gpu i have 10 registers for example and i have 12 uh, variables to be stored so you are not able to accommodate the total registers for storing these 12 values so we go for using a method known as register spill so register spill is you have only 10 locations available and you want to store 12 values so the excess of it will be coming out so this spill is nothing but you try to accommodate the remaining extra elements either into your cache memory or you can store them in your shared memory or you can even go up to your global memory so uh, instead of this registers uh, spill what they have done is instead of going for this register spill what they have done is they have used a method where uh, if in a program I'm making use of local variables. So I is a local variable. So they have designated a thing that all the local variables will be stored in the registers. So instead of uh, taking care of spill and managing it in some other location, they have designated that all local variables will be stored in the registers. And in a function, normally we call these variables as your formal arguments, right? So these formal arguments will be stored in your shared memory formal arguments and whenever you are calling a function you specify some arguments in your function call so these you call it as actual arguments so these actual arguments whatever you are using these actual arguments will be stored in your global memory so you are making use of the registers in a very efficient way instead of going for register spilling and managing your memory so these are uh, some memories which we could cover in this class so we have seen about a global memory we have seen about a shared memory and we have even covered registers we'll be covering the next set of memories in the next class